Hey guys, welcome to Moscow. You know, I've been pretty active for the last couple of years on a few subreddits like Build a PC and the PC Master Race and Battle Stations, of course. And I've gotten quite a few questions in regards to how much it costs to build a custom PC in Moscow, if it's popular at all, and what kind of parts are available. So I decided that it'd be a fun idea to maybe show you guys what a marketplace for PC parts looks like and what kind of things you can buy there. There's so much traffic today. Oh my god. It's the first day of snow and even though it's all melted away already, <laughs> the traffic hasn't gone anywhere. It's literally taken me like an hour and a half to get from my house to, uh, to the computer store. I don't exactly know what I'm gonna get because I'm planning on buying whatever's in stock, but there are some parts that I'm pretty keen on finding. So let's just see what we get. All right, guys, there it is, the Garbushka Marketplace. This shopping center has been around practically forever. And uh, although it's it's mostly just smaller stores, there are a, a, a couple of large chain stores, sort of similar to Fry's and uh, Micro Center in the US. This place is just huge. It's a lot bigger than it seems from the outside. So I'm gonna park and we're gonna go part hunting. I'm here so early, everything's still closed. There's so many bootleg DVDs and stuff here. You can get pretty much whatever you want. Music, movies, you can get a hard disk drive with like all the newest movies on it. Sometimes this place is a little bit too weird. It's like, you want binoculars? There you go, you have them. You want water filters? Sure, why not? <laughs> right next to the binoculars. Hey, what about arts and crafts supplies? That's what I want. Okay, sure. No, what I'm really looking for is a suitcase or a briefcase or something for traveling. Various microscopes and just weird stuff, pots and pans, it makes no sense. Finally found a few stores that I was looking for and I got, I got some good stuff. Let me see if I can find everything else. I've been here for nearly two hours now. I still don't have a full PC, but I have, I have all the most important things. Didn't quite find the memory I was looking for, but that's okay. That's fine. I think, I think I know where to go to get the last bits and pieces. All right, guys. So this is the gear that I managed to grab at the Garbushka Electronics Marketplace in Moscow yesterday. Now, something I probably should have mentioned earlier is that I wasn't exactly planning on building a run-of-the-mill PC. Now, even though I've built dozens of computers for my friends and family over the past couple of years, my personal rig has gone largely untouched and maybe even neglected. I've been using an i7-990X along with a Rampage 3 Extreme for the past five years or so. And while a computer was up to spec at the time, by modern standards, it's really lagging behind the curve. At this point, even swapping out the graphics card or RAM can't do much about keeping my system from aging. That's why I decided that with the appearance of a whole new generation of processors, video cards, with the availability of DDR4 RAM and NVMe drives, it's time to make the jump and upgrade my computer from the ground up into a powerful, multitasking, all-purpose PC. Now, to be honest, when I went shopping yesterday, I didn't exactly have a particular parts list in mind. I did have a good idea of what I wanted and that is to build a system based around Ryzen's Threadripper 1950X processor and then choose parts that would go along with it accordingly. 
Obviously, this was all limited by my ability to find the 1950X in stock in the first place, but I managed to do just that, so let's get right into it. Now, I won't be naming the individual stores where I managed to grab all of these components. I will, however, give you an idea of the price on all of these parts. That way you can gauge the difference between prices in North America, Europe, and Russia. Keep in mind that, at the time of filming, the exchange rate is 59.5 rubles to the dollar. Let's begin with the heart of the system, the Ryzen Threadripper 1950X processor. This 16-core, 32-thread beast is a dream for power users. Let's just hope it meets the expectations set by its monstrous 75,000 ruble price tag. Now, a processor as powerful as the 1950X demands an equally great motherboard, and the ASUS ROG Zenith Extreme is the one to get, barring a BIOS upgrade of course, but it comes at hefty price, 43,000 rubles. Moving on to the PSU, we have the EVGA Supernova 1200P2 power unit. It's not the newest PSU in the market, but I still consider it to be one of the best, and at 21,000 rubles, it is quite expensive. For graphics processing, I chose MSI's GTX 1080 Ti Lightning X. I didn't get the Lightning Z because one, it wasn't in stock, and two, even if it was, the small difference in clock speeds isn't really worth the very large difference in price. Now, the video card I bought cost 62,000 rubles. Next up, we have 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM in the form of four sticks of 16 gig Corsair Vengeance RGB RAM. I wanted to get 128 gigabytes, but there weren't that many sticks in stock. In total, these two packages cost me 49,000 rubles. For storage, I decided to go with Samsung's 960 Pro M2 NVMe SSDs. I bought two of these, they're 512 gigs each, and I plan on running them in a RAID 0 configuration. That may not seem like much, but I do have a 30 terabyte home server for all my professional needs, so I really don't need that much more storage inside the PC itself. In total, this terabyte of storage space cost me 38,000 rubles. Now, strangely enough, a major issue with building a system like this is finding a proper cooling system for the processor. Even on AMD's official website, if you look at supported cooling solutions, you'll see that most of them are Asetek spin-off all-in-one coolers that don't cover the entirety of the Threadripper processor. There are two exceptions, of course, which would be Enermax Threadripper Edition all-in-one, which isn't available in Moscow anywhere, I checked, and the other option is an EK water block. Now, EK Waterblocks makes three different solutions for the Threadripper processor, and I went for the Full Nickel Threadripper Edition uh, Supremacy Evo Waterblock. And of course, to go along with that, I have an all-in-one solution, which would be a pump and reservoir combination. I have an Alpha Cool 420 Nexus UT30, UT60, I'm sorry, radiator, uh, and all the fittings, tubing, etc., necessary to make the custom loop work. And all of these items came out to 25,000 rubles. Another issue with building a system such as this one, especially with a custom cooling solution, is space. That is finding a case large enough to house all of these components comfortably. Now, I'm used to building in cases such as Corsair's Obsidian Series and Cooler Master's Cosmos 2, but this particular time around, I wanted to go with something slightly smaller. That is, if you can call Thermaltake's View 71 Tempered Glass Edition RGB case small. These names have gotten way too long. You guys need to get it under control. Uh, I do like the look of the View 71 case, but I know it's not exactly perfect for my build because the ASUS Zenith Extreme covers up most of the grommets when installing it, and uh, the backplate on the motherboard also creates issues, but I think we'll be able to work around that. All in all, the View 71, along with five Thermaltake Ring Plus 14 fans, came out to 16,000 rubles. To sum it all up, at over 300,000 rubles, this is an incredibly expensive build, and you can bet that I blew the lid off my initial budget plan. But I'm hoping that the raw processing power of the Ryzen Threadripper will more than make up for the cost uh, or the initial investment into this system. So now all that's left is to put it together and check it out.